Um, uh, yeah, hello everybody. So it's a big pleasure for me to, to speak here because I also have a, quite an academic um, background actually. So it's always nice to be uh, speaking in a more a student or a context. Um, just a little bit of background on the talk today. So um, I'm currently heading two companies, Anacode and Equintel, and both of them are uh, focused on market analytics for uh, different target groups and market analytics, big data, and natural language processing. And the tool that I would like to present today, so our AI trends and use monitor product that we have built a bit of this intersection of because in both companies we are very deep into AI, but we have also seen that um, today it's actually it can be very hard to get an overview over what's happening AI on the one hand, and then also in general to stay up with all the developments because there is actually just too much of a uh, and. Um, I think that you as students might probably also be able to relate to this problem. So this, this I will present our solution to this issue, the AI use monitor. Then at the end, I will also tell you how you can get access to the current uh, version of the tool. So first, um, our agenda. In the first part, I will present the challenge a bit more in detail, and then I will also talk about our vision with the tool, basically a new way of accessing AI knowledge. Because I think that also in the educational or the academic, you know, we have this traditional way of coding knowledge and and so on. But today, there's also a place for a new way and coding and saving knowledge and also actually accessing it. Um, then I will go a bit into the back end and the natural language processing technology that we use. And that finally, I will give you a short um, live demo of the tool so you can see how it works. And then we can go into our Q&A session if we still have time. OK, so first, uh, for the challenge. We all know that there is this big, scary evolution going on. So what's happening exactly? Basically, there is a growing complexity in AI, which comes from globalization on the one hand. So um, you know that AI developments are happening everywhere. So for instance, we have, have US, which used to be the center, but now we also have China, which is coming up with us. And of course, we also have a lot of AI developments in Europe that are going on. And on the other hand, the complexity also comes from the fact that AI currently is penetrating all uh, levels of uh, life and technology. So of course, it's very prominent in the scientific context and uh, in the R&D context of the companies. But additionally, now it's also very prominent in general for consumers and for the society. It's also getting very prominent in the So there are a lot of developments that are kind of interacting together. This is very hard actually to understand all these connections, interactions, and influences. Um, then, second point, we have shorter innovation cycles. So, on the one hand, new algorithms are coming up very quickly, also because we have more and more data, which makes it easier to develop new algorithms and more and more computational power, of course. So, and on the other hand, also because we have all this trend towards um, automating and scaling AI integration into real life businesses and use cases. And when innovation cycles were of course, it's uh, your rhythm or your speed of update. And third point, overdose of content and uh, information. I think that's uh, everything. Uh, that's something that everybody of us experiences at the moment, not just in AI, but uh, in AI we also have this problem that 
the eye, of course, is very prominent on the marketing level. So we see a lot of marketing buzz, which can be very generic and very positive, but it doesn't really provide us a lot of information about the substance uh, behind the specific. <clears throat> specific companies or use cases. And I think that in general, especially when you try to get into a new field, it can be actually very difficult also to evaluate the quality of specific content there. So it's very easy to get lost over a dose of information. So uh, what do we get with induced monitor? First thing is that um, it disentangles and structures the AI landscape using a large quantity of text data and then natural language processing that we apply on the text data. Then um, it combines deep domain expertise. So as I told you, um, the team that is working on this product, basically it's very uh, deep into AI itself and works with AI on the basis. Basically, this expertise is integrated into the product and kind of complements um, the big data approach that uh, we use. And finally, um, we use a continuous data stream, which means you can get information on the daily the real time. What's in it for you? On the one hand, as students, as business executives, or even as developers or researchers, you can save a lot of time that you normally spend on all this web browsing, surfing, research, uh, reading content, analyzing content, and um, also build up your unique information by the unique ways in which you use the tools. And finally, you can get inspiration for your own project, be it research project or business. So, a short uh, summary of the features that we have in the AI Trends and News Monitor. So basically, it all starts with our taxonomy or classification of the AI domain, which is built up from our text data. So the point here, and why I mentioned this at the first place, is that um, when you go to different people and you ask them, what do you think AI is? Or what do you think, what is AI? Yeah, so you go to a scientist, then you ask a business executive, and then maybe you ask a consumer, then everybody will have a completely different understanding of what AI is, because it's also a very complex uh, concept. And probably all of them will be right, but, uh, and will define some parts of AI correctly, but uh, none of them actually will be like, will be able to give you a complete definition. And this is why for us, this uh, classification of AI into different components and then also the different subtopics is the primary feature here, just to show, okay, this is the AI universe that we have at the present moment. Um, second thing, for each of the topics that we have a classification, also offer a quite detailed and as said, they are also dynamic and updated on a daily basis. Then we also offer insights on AI companies. So at the moment, we focus on the bigger companies, but we are slowly also integrating all this very exciting flow of startups that in the space. And finally, we can also we also build the relations and the connections between the different topics, and then the companies and specific in. So that was a quick intro into the concept, basically. And now I will jump into the second section. So the back, I would like to first give you a quick overview um, over the plan. As I said, we started um, with a large quantity of text data that we collect from the internet. So basically, unstructured web sources. I will say a bit more about it um, on the next slide. Then, since this data is um, structured, first we need to bring it into a structured form before we are able to actually um, extract insight from it. Artificial intelligence using natural language processing. So we use um, embeddings as the basis for most of our algorithms so that we just had this basis for um, applying deep learning algorithms. And then uh, the whole 
toolbox, basically all the classical NLP algorithms, so concept extraction, sentiment analysis, topic classification, relation extraction, which, however, is tailored to the AI domain by virtue of our taxonomy and also by virtue of a pre-processing of the data, which is customized to um, our AI taxonomy. Then, third step, so what we have learned in general um, in both companies and in all analytic scenarios is that uh, it's, uh, in most cases, it's not enough if uh, you just output the, you know, the result of NLP to your user or customer. So, for instance, if you do sentiment analysis, you say, okay, is positive or is it negative and so on. Um, in most cases, it's still very, um, it's still necessary that you add some kind of domain expertise on top of it, which is, provides kind of a conceptual and then also contextual interpretation about what you just, uh, what your NLP just said. Yeah. So for instance, if you provide an output of a sentiment analysis and let's say you say that your brand is negative, very sorry, then normally <laughs> the customer gets much more value if you also give him an explanation why is it actually negative. Yeah? So this is a quick example, but um, here in the case of uh, our artificial intelligence, we are currently less uh, focused on sentiment per se, because uh, there is not, yeah, I mean, the discussion is not so emotionally colored in this case, but instead our focus is really on the taxonomy and also the automatic um, extension of the taxonomy from our data. That's also a point that I will go into a bit more detail in a moment. Uh, we focus on the detection of new topics and trends from the data and then also um, on the discovery of new companies and on the analysis of specific industry verticals and of the penetration that AI has in different, um, let's say, traditional industries. And the output, basically, you get this user interface with real-time insights and transparency on the AI landscape. And there are two points that I would like to show and explain in a bit more detail which are relevant uh, on the one hand to the users of the tool, but on the other hand, also they're kind of the backbone of our technology. So on the one hand, the databases, and then second, um, this algorithm that we use for constructing and for updating and expanding our AI taxonomy. So first, for data sources, um, I just said that you can go to different people and then you will get completely different understandings of what AI is. So this is really that in um, a tool which gives you an overview and in general to understand the, the whole landscape, it's really important to use and to integrate uh, different perspectives. And this is what we do by integrating different types of data. So specifically, here are the four, yeah, let's say the four main groups of stakeholders and perspectives that we cover by specific data sources. So first we have the um, general press data. So currently we have a focus on English data, but we're also integrating Chinese data. So these are sources like the Guardian, CNBC, internet would be the CNA.T and so on, and which basically is the perspective of uh, the consumers on the one hand, and then in general, the society also. So the discourse that the society is um, absorbing about AI. Um, then we have business and financial press, which mainly reflects the perspective of investors. So people who basically get it going on the financial side. And then we have technology blogs, which can be very interesting for developers on the one hand, but also to a certain degree, of course, to researchers. And finally, we have scientific publications where we integrate so the major AI conference proceedings and also uh, journals. And this, of course, reflects more of the researcher perspective, but it can also be interesting to the developers. No. Maybe here also is that okay? I, I went from general to more specific, or from uh, like more on 
superficial to more in detail here, but you can also consider it into the other direction in terms of the life cycle of specific AI development. So specifically, um, <clears throat> normally when a technology just uh, gets into being or is just formed, then of course, discuss a lot at the scientific level. So at the bottom level that we have here, then it goes into the R&D process of the companies and occurs in technology blogs. It occurs also in patents, actually. Uh, and then in its way towards commercialization, it first gets into the business and the finance press, which is a bit more professional. And then at the end, of course, also into the general press. So this is an interesting um, rule, let's say, or a relation that you're often also observing in data when we track them over time. And second, um, our AI taxonomy. So the special thing is here that this taxonomy is uh, learning itself over time. And this is very important for us because we wouldn't really have the manual manpower to maintain a taxonomy like that. And I think it would actually be, even with the manpower, the task would be like very complex and very tedious and error prone. That's how taxonomy construction is um, in general. So how does it work? Basically, it starts with a classification of AI topics that we already had at the beginning. Uh, with some uh, main sections, so we have applications, we have algorithms, we have the AI libraries um, and others. And then um, via dynamic updates from the data that you collect daily, basically it's able to learn new topics on the fly. So here we use um, an algorithm for a taxonomy construction, which on the one hand, uh, really relies on distributional similarity. And on the other hand, it relies also on lexical relations that you find in the text data. So specifically things like uh, hypernomy, if something is a subclass of uh, some other class, then mironymy, if something is a part of another thing, and uh, of course also synonymy and other lexical relations. And these lexical relations in many cases can be really learned from surface patterns that you actually find in the text data. So that's like a uh, perfect source actually for learning classifications here in terms of their um, lexi of their linguistic expression in lexical relations. Um, I don't think I have too much time to go into detail here, but those who are interested, um, I put uh, at the bottom a reference to a paper that we have on this topic. And also, I think I can follow up with a video on a, uh, of a talk uh, that focuses specifically on this algorithm for automatic taxonomy construction. OK, and finally, uh, for a, a very short live demo of the tool. Let's look at it here. So it's, um, it's a beta version. We are still doing a lot of uh, work on the UI and the uh, X. Uh, here we have our famous AI taxonomy. So you can see the different components. We have the applications, algorithms. Then one thing that has been coming up in the data now is AI governance. Uh, with the new regulation of the EU, we have really seen that uh, it's uh, like prominence and the data has been increasing a lot. Um, this tool is interactive. Click on any of these sections and then it will expand uh, um, all the different subtopics. Let's say we're interested in deep learning and then it will go one level deeper. <clears throat> um, then you can see that each uh, topic has a size and the size of the topic reflects its prominence in our data. So let's say we look at, at robotics, for instance, and then we can see in the toolkit that it has a frequency in our data of 140,000 mentions, basically. This is data for, um, so this is data since the beginning of 2020 that we use here for the um, frequency calculation. 
Okay, then um, as I said, so this is the AI taxonomy. As I said, we also provide profiles um, on the specific topics. So let's just, uh, I don't know, pick one of them. So let's say recognition. So click um, on the topic. And uh, we will come here to the profile of the talk. So what we see here is basically a quick definition, then frequency, the trend score, which reflects kind of how the interest in the topic has been increasing in the past um, six months. Here are some related topics, able to navigate there if ever you want to um, have more context knowledge. Then on the relevant articles, we find the most, uh, yeah, the most relevant articles basically on this topic. So by default here, we will just show 100 articles. Uh, you can find some additional information about each article. So the, the domain, then the relevant the topic, some of the important keywords that were mentioned, and also the other AI topics that we found in that article. And here you have the possibility for a free text search you have all them advanced options. So if you want to filter by data source, by additional topic, industries, and so on, you can just use these um, advanced options. Here we go into the data sources. So this is exactly the distinction that I was talk talking about between uh, general press, business press, tech press, and scientific press. And you can basically just see the proportion of articles and how they distribute between the different data sources. A time of uh, how the topic has been developing over a time, and here combined with the uh, related topics, which are bias, image recognition, and emotion AI, it's also possible to switch them off so you get a cleaner picture. But it's also nice to have this uh, additional context of how the related topics are uh, developing over a time. And finally, here we also have some additional context information. So specifically, we and how do the data, so how do the articles uh, distribute between different industries? So in that case, we would see that automotive, finance, and healthcare are different industries or industry verticals in which face recognition is mentioned. Then here we have um, a range of companies that are very active in the space and that are well strongly associated basically with face recognition. And here we have just a mix of keywords or other topics that are also frequently associated with face recognition. That's really a bit of a while at the moment, but maybe interesting to know so these keywords, they're actually the, like let's say the first step for a new concept and new topic into our taxonomy. Yeah, so once it's an interesting correlation basically, and some of these keywords keep up Popping, uh, keep popping up very frequently, then we always um, consider adding them to our taxonomy also. Um, inter important in terms of usability, all these charts are interactive. So you can click on any data point and want to know why I'm so much related to face recognition. Just click on the data point and uh, basically see the articles which relate to the specific um, combination of IBM and face recognition. And same thing here and basically in all the um, charts that we have seen. So it's taking a bit of time, but still. <laughs> okay, so that was the quick intro. As I said, the taxonomy, then you go um, on the final grains level of topic pages. and. Additionally, here, like the quick news for the last uh, three to five days, basically, yeah. just a selection of the relevant news for the time span. That was the demo. Um, as I said, at the moment, we are looking for um, um, giving out test access to the tool because it's still in a beta version. So, if um, you're interested then just send an email to this address info at anaco.de in the subject line AI insights and then we will send you a personal um, you can basically to access the tool for now it's completely free of use but of course we are very happy to collect all kinds of feedback on the data the use the analysis and 
and so on. And um, yeah, I think that this um, really be very pleased to discuss this tool in more academic context. So feel free just to reach out and then we can have a, a additional feedback session on it also.